This video describes a PIP joint volar plate reconstruction following a volar plate rupture and PIP instability. Here we see the swan neck deformity and the difficulty this patient has initiating flexion of the PIP joint due to volar plate incompetence. Several studies report that such volar plate incompetence requires surgery which is successful in most cases. The procedure is contraindicated in the presence of severe degenerative arthritis. In this video, we are describing a new, simple method for late reconstruction that does not require pull-out sutures or buttons on the dorsum of the finger. Surgical options as discussed by Malone and others, American Journal Orthopedics 2010, one, direct suture of the volar plate to the base of the middle phalanx using a pull-out suture or an anchor. Two, tenodesis using one or both slips of the FDS. Three, tenodesis with tendon graft, usually of the palmaris longus. Under monitored care anesthesia using a metacarpal block with lidocaine, the PIP joint is exposed. In this case, a radio-based flap is shown. Under the flexor digitorum superficialis, the volar plate is dissected and mobilized distally to the point of the rupture from the middle phalanx. The desired point of insertion is located in the middle phalanx. Holes are drilled and tapped to place one or two anchors in this site. The anchor is placed at an angle close to dead man's angle for optimal pullout strength. The anchor driver or inserter is used to place the anchor. The anchor is 3 millimeters in diameter, short and blunt, and specifically designed for use in the phalanx. The plastic wraps are removed from the shaft to free the multifilament stainless steel suture. The anchor is also fabricated using force fiber for other uses. The cap of the inserter is removed and the needles are removed from the handle of the inserter. Once the anchors are positioned, the suture is then brought through the volar plate and back again. Alternatively, a separate suture may be used to attach the volar plate using a cross lock stitch as is done in a flexor tendon repair. The sutures are brought through the crimp from each side and the exact amount of tension is applied to place the joint in the exact optimal position. The crimp is compressed. A few additional sutures using 4 nylon may be used to suture the volar plate to the local tissues to complete the attachment. The stability is tested. The wound is closed. Postoperative care. A dorsal block splint holding the PIP at 5 to 10 degrees is worn for three weeks. Active range of motion with extension block is started at two to three days post-op. After three weeks, the splint is followed by a silver ring splint for another three weeks. At two months, there is good range of motion and excellent stability.